Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Yes, Deb Chanel's 40s World. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so at this time. Watch my videos and share them with your loved ones. So anybody that like going back in time, looking at good times, something how to lay off, good times, even cry to rip off, good times, scratching and surviving, good times, ain't getting a child good times, ain't we lucky we got them, doom, 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 doom. Good times. Yeah. Yes, we're going to be discussing and reviewing uh, season one, episode one. The, uh, I think it was called Two Old Blues. This is the episode where James thinks he's going to get the family out the ghetto again, or at least making a decent wage and provide for his family. But as always, the writers go and write something else all the time, okay? Let's get right on into it. And if you don't know by now, it's a review. It's not a show where you're looking at that particular episode. Because you can go on different other sites and get it for free and watch it. Or you can do like me. Enjoy it uh, anytime I feel like I want to watch them, that they're not playing it on, you know, cable television. In Atlanta, it's, uh, if you got... Affinity or Comcast, you will get it on 72, depending on where you live. I think that's right. Anyway, I bought the series, so I'm going to be going over it if you all like it. But basically, we have it where Florida is making breakfast. She's telling everyone to come on and get ready, come on and eat so they can get on at her house, go to school, go to work, and do what they got to do. Okay? And Jane sneaks up behind her, and you think they might have had a very good sexual night the night prior. And uh, just real funny, he sneaks up behind her, grabs her from behind, kissing on her, you know, and this, that, and the third. And, like, they want to just get it on right then and there. Okay? I call it a cute bear hug. And he's kissing on her and holding on her and telling her how, you know, he loves her and this, that, and that. And she goes in to say, like, uh, you could have got married to anybody you wanted to. You know, it just is what it is, isn't it? And then James like, well, I could have and I didn't. I want you. And that's the one I chose. You're the one I chose. And that's all we're going to talk about this situation. And then um, and then she said, well, why did you really, really want to marry me? And then he just went on to say it. And he was playing jokingly. He was saying, God, you were pregnant. <laughs> That was funny. That was so funny. Uh, uh, she looked at him like, what? It wasn't because you love me. It wasn't because of my body, my wits, my charm, my intellect. You just married me because we were pregnant. And then um, the kids are behind her, which is JJ and Michael. And then they come around and uh, Michael pretty much like, uh, it, it don't matter to me. Uh, it wouldn't have bothered me because I ain't the first that was born. I am not the oldest. I am the youngest. So then he looks at JJ and then JJ look at him like, oh, that's supposed to mean something. And then he looks at his mom and dad and they looking stupid too. And he said, I know y'all had me and y'all were my mom and dad and y'all were married, right? And then Florida goes on to tell him, yeah, you know that's right. Meaning, you know, Florida's all up into living right, doing right. And her mama raised her right. Meaning, you don't go have children out of wedlock. You get married first, then you make a family. So, she just really got him straight on that. Like, yes, you were a legit child. You were no bastard child out of wedlock, okay? And then, um, Thelma comes out in the room. And she, her and JJ start driving, hassling each other. And James is like, what? I'm tired of y'all. Do, don't anybody come to the breakfast table anymore and say good morning and, and, and this, that, and third. And they looking at each other and they still going on and stuff like that fussing. Then Florida tells JJ to go down um, to get the mail. And then, you know, JJ is like, okay, I, I'll go get it. But can I have breakfast first? And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to get the mail. And um, Jesus says, you know, okay, I do it, whatever. And then his mama tells him, which is Florida, now go get our mail. Don't mess with nobody else's mail. Because I know how you like to just find stuff, meaning another word for stealing, you know. And um, 
She said, just don't find nobody else's mail. Just bring our mail back. Then Florida tells JJ, um, God didn't make man's hands to steal. And JJ replies back to his mom, which is Florida. Uh, well, why did he provide more hands, fingers than pockets? So, you know, she looks at him, give him the evil eye and stuff. He know he better get on by his business. But uh, James Sr. interrupts them and, and tells both of them, you know, hey, whatever. But he going to tell JJ he going to get that mail. And then so he runs on out the door. He goes to get the mail. And then uh, Florida is trying to figure out, well, why? What is the uh, hurry about getting our mail? What's up with that? You know, and stuff all, you know, like, you know. Like, what's going on with the male situation? She's worried and she want to know why he's interested in it. So he goes on to tell her that he applied for this apprenticeship job and, and training and he took the test and he thinks he did real well about it. And she goes on and said, oh, OK. Uh, well, you know, don't get your hopes up high, this, that and third, because, you know, we go one way thinking everything going to be positive. Then we get a screw or uh, wrench thrown into the uh, equation and everything just messes all up. Um, and he's like, no, nah, I got a good feeling about this. And then um, Florida, um, you know, like I said, she's not really confident or whatever. And then Florida asked Michael to say grace and he going to say it quick, fast in a hurry. Like he didn't really want to do it, but it was just like, you know, Ooh, like a, 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 you snap your finger real fast and that was the prayer and she looks at him you know and act all like you ain't do that right but she ain't want to fuss no more with him and everybody seemed to be hungry except for Thelma because Thelma look at him and she said oh man not oatmeal again so she like I don't want no oatmeal like she's trying to be bougie at this time of day okay don't know what got up in her head this morning to f try to fight with her mama about you know what they gonna eat when they already live in the blue water. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. Okay. Then Florida tells her to be grateful. Both of them, really. And Michael agrees with Thelma. You know, Florida tells both of them to just shut up and eat. No more discussion. Meanwhile, James is reading the paper. And, you know, Florida's listening to him and what he was saying. And he was saying they have some openings for a mechanic. And Florida's telling him, well, oh, okay, cool. Uh, You should try from one of them jobs. You're Great handyman, uh, James. Then he goes in and explains to her the difference between a mechanic, which most white people get those jobs, and a handyman, which is what he's categorized in as a black man doing stuff. Two different things. And they look, look at each other and they laugh about it. Okay. And then when Lona walks in the, you know, Evans rest, I mean, restaurant apartment, like she got to kill her owner. They always leave it open for some reason. Never understood that because she never really knocked. She always just came in. And she greets everyone and spreads the news. Uh, You know, like little gossip around the apartment complex, what's going on. And then she says she saw Heavenly Prince of, um, you know, the Prince of the apartment complex whatever jj and she told him to look and see if she got in the mail too because she was expecting some mail from her ex-husband so she sits at the table and you know they have a little small talk and then james asked her with florida you know in the midst of all of it you know asking her why did she marry this man and you know why they got so divorced so quickly and she goes on to tell him honey why she was married to him he had a mistress on the side and that just wasn't gonna work so that's why she pretty much got out of the marriage and he's paying her alimony. And so it shuts both him him up as well as his wife, Florida. And then Michael goes in and says, oh, because he's sneaking in the background in the kitchen, listening to them while he's trying to, you know, finish his oatmeal or whatever. And he goes on saying, oh, your husband committed adultery. And then <laughs> everybody really stops look at Michael. So they're trying to figure out why is he in their conversation and why, they, and why is he interpreting it so well? And um, Florida asked Michael, where did he get the information of knowing about adultery? What, you know, magazines or um, kids he's hanging around that's filling his head up with all this. He, he just said, okay, the Bible, that shut everybody down. Because adultery, you know, it's, it's in the Bible. It talks about it. And it gives you where it derives from and all that information. So James and Winona look at Florida because she's like the Bible thumping person that tries to keep everybody in check with their morals and, you know, things how they're supposed to treat people and their integrity and their character. So they look at her and James said, okay, 
he keep a score. Michael won Florida zero. <laughs> and they both laugh about it. Then JJ comes back and gives him the mail that was in their mailbox. He didn't find nobody else's mail. Only uh, their uh, family mail in their box. And um, James reads the letter. He tells everybody at the table uh, he did well on his apprenticeship uh, program that he took the test, he passed, and they want to interview him. I mean, I don't know how you get a letter in the mail and then you, you end up having uh, that day, and then you end up having an interview that day. Don't know how they did it, but you know, this is TV. We just go with, with it, okay? However, they write it. And then um, he goes to uh, read the letter to him and saying that he comes off making $2 an hour. I guess that was real wealthy back then when they were taping this show, I guess in the 60s or 70s. I don't know. And then the, uh, it increases up to $4.25. So everybody thought James is going to be a wealthy man. He's going to be, you know, uh, doing it on thing, moving them out, the projects, all this good stuff. So he goes, he's happy. And he goes and says he's going to go get ready for the interview. And uh, me. Florida gets the kids on off to school one by one, having a little small talk with them. And uh, then uh, Bologna goes in and tell them, no, I'm sorry. Um, the goes in, Bologna's gone, and I guess she come back later on, but then Florida gets the kids off and stuff, and James is the last one to leave the house towards going to his interview to find out when he starts this new union apprentice job. And, um, or it's a unionized job in the apprentice program he did well, and um, they wanted to get him a job off the spot. And he tells Florida to spare no expense. He want to have a big celebration. He want to hire the Supremes along with Diana. Uh, somebody else he said, but I forgot their names. I don't, I don't know if he said the eyes of brothers. But, you know, he was really just teasing. Uh, good banter for them. But just, you know, have a nice party, good food, good friends. And we're going to celebrate this achievement. So uh, Florida want to know how all this stuff supposed to be paid. Or uh, uh, she's supposed to buy the stuff with, and he said, you know, spare no expense, do some of the rent money, just that, you know, just that and third. Um, and that's why, you know, in real days time, we don't use no rent money. You need to go and pay that rent, rent, because you at least want to know your uh head will be safe sleeping in that apartment or house, however you have it for that month. Okay, no worries, just worry for the next month if you have to worry at all. Anyway, then um. James is at the interview. The man is going over, you know, preliminaries like, you know, his age, not his age, his um stats of his uh, jobs. He performed well on the test they gave him, uh, how many kids he had, his uh, service time he had. You know, everything looking beautiful till it comes up to uh, the program specifications, which was his age. So when he was talking about the service and they were trying to add up some age from when he was in it to now, whatever. They're trying to say, oh, you were 10 years old and you served in, you know, the service. That's not right. So he goes back to ask James what his um his age was, his date of birth. James told him. And of course, it, it's way over the standards that they wanted for the program. It was an error on their part, not James. But James don't want to hear all that. He said, uh, the interviewer is telling him, well, you know, the program is only made for individuals uh, from 18 to 35, and of course you're 41 or something like that in his 40s, and you're way over that um, that status, that uh, requirement we had to give you the job. And James said, well, it ain't my fault, it's y'all's fault. I passed the test, I did all the other requirements, now what my job? And so uh, the man was like getting rude with James, like, you know, I can't change, you know, what is what. Which we know you can change. It was whoever's fault was that. You going to do that, what you got to do. Forget them rules you did. You know, this man depending on his job. You know, I'm, I'm getting all in my feelings and stuff. Like, man, you need to get a man a job. I'm tired of him living in the ghetto. We need to get James out that ghetto and his family. I'm tired of it now. So I was just frustrated as James. But James, you know, did it well as he always do when he got to check people. And, uh, you know, he's always, you know, telling him, yeah, I know how the thing go. The government messed up. And then I had to pay for the government's mistake. You know, getting me all hyped, you know, getting me all in my feelings, thinking I'm going to do better for my family, and, and, and y'all, you know, bullshitting me, and this, that, and third. So, he said, yeah, I know how everything works, you know. I'm too old. 
And I, the next phase of my life, I, 10 years later, I'll be collecting Social Security. So, wouldn't be no need to be working because I'd be too damn old to be doing anything. So, he got up really pissed and, you know, said his two last cents to the interviewer and went on about his business. Trying to figure out how he's going to tell his family that they still stuck in the same hole that he was in prior to him leaving. Uh, meanwhile, the children have already decorated the house. Uh, decorations look nice. They got the music going. Florida done put her spread of uh, eateries or edibles for today's tonight's occasion, which they're celebrating James, you know, passing the test and, uh, you know, going to be in a uni unionized job where he's going to be making some money for the family. Little do they know, all of them went south, okay? And, uh, you know, they're dancing, JJ and Michael and um, Thelma, you know, they're dancing to her little groove music she got and stuff of that nature. And then Florida walks in, done got everything uh, for the party, but she forgot the chips. So she asked um, Thelma and JJ to go get some more chips. And he's wondering why his sister got to come with him. And she was saying, because I, I want the chips bought. I don't want them to be found. Meaning, she's talking about finding stuff. Maybe JJ going to go out there and steal stuff. So, it just is what it is on that front of that note, I should say. Then we come where uh, they she sends the kids on out to get the um, chips, and, you know, they do that. Then Walona comes over, and, you know, she's ready for the party, looking all snazzy and stuff back there in, I guess, the 60s. That was a nice outfit she had. And it looked nice right now for this age group, really, because nothing really, um, how you call it, is different from whatever happened in the 30s and 40s because fashion just keeps recycling itself. Maybe the colors are a little bit more vibrant or a little more pastelish, but it's, it's the same uh, look, in other words. Uh, so she comes in and she's acting all high class and trying to, you know, joke around with Lord about, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with y'all. Y'all be so high class. Y'all going to forget about me. But, you know, I ain't going to let that happen because I, I, I'm snazzy too and I'm sassy and I'll be there right with y'all. But anyway, they go on and play with each other, role play where she's a, say, um, I'll say a, a magazine Vogue uh, interviewer. She comes in and do a spread or, um, I, um, what do you call it? I have, for lack of a better word, an interview where she's uh, interviewing Florida about the lifestyle of the rich and famous and how uh, she has her right now apartment looking so lovely and, you know, uh, of, of course, embellishing on the furnishings she has and what she uh, is going to have and this, that, and the third. And they're just playing like ritzy upper crisp aristocratic type behavior and banter and you know it's very cute and whatnot and they were talking about florida got four yachts for each season or whatever i was like falling out laughing probably like now this is how we act when we got new money you know what i'm saying we act like we ain't had nothing because we really didn't have them but we want to see and act how we see other rich and affluent people act <laughs> <laughs> they got that new money. Cause old money wouldn't be acting that way. Old money is something that you were born into, and you've always had the uh, silver spoon. You know, when you were at birth, you you didn't know nothing about poverty or needing anything or wanting anything you couldn't get. It's always given to you at a drop of a hat. So yes, most of us don't know about that life. But uh, like I said, it was role playing, just standing the third, and then uh, Michael comes in and. And interrupts them, strut his stuff to Walona and stuff. And she, you know, they both laugh at them. And then Thelma and JJ comes back with the potato chips. And, you know, they all happy. And then they hear a knock at the door. And then you got all these folks coming in, you know, ready to uh, celebrate James, you know, uh, newfound wealth and this, that, and the third. And, you know, Florida's telling them, you know, it's almost time for him to be home uh, so they can celebrate. And she was trying to do this old white folk type of, you know, uh, he's a jolly good fellow and all that kind of stuff, singing, and Mike was saying, uh-uh, mama, hey, uh, by the time he come in here, he'll look at us like we crazy, like we're a totally different family. We gotta spice this up, you know, the black folk way. So they got a little, uh, stomping and clapping with the hands and the feet, and got it going on, and James come through the door, and he's looking surprised, like, oh, Lord, they don't spend all this rent money, we're gonna be out, ass out, and, you know, I should have called and told her what was it, you know, what was up, and he was trying to motion um, Florida to come to him and tell, so she he could tell her what actually happened that he had the job, but because uh, 
clerical error had made him younger than what he was. He couldn't get the job because the age is, the age for the job was from 18 to 35. And, of course, he's 41. And they didn't give it to him because that technicality. What you went outside for? Okay. And so then, um, oh, what I was going to say. Then, you know, uh, he just gets tired of people, you know, coming up here. Because Thelma came up here and told me this bad suit she wanted. The hat, the hat, and the uh, shoes to go with it. You know, she ain't talking about her education or taking a trip or something like that. She was talking about her outfit. That's how her mom was working at the time. Then she was talking about she wanted to get her mama, Florida, uh, a nice big screen TV. And I'm like, that's a man thing. You, you should have been wanting the same thing for your mama, outfit or a car or something. You know what I'm saying? Then JJ came over talking about, oh, he want a, a, a car, he want a ride, he want some wheels. He dad just got tired of all of it because he wanted to grant everybody's request. But at this time, you know, he couldn't do it, you know, because he knew what he had heard and what was presented to him. And all was bullshit. So then he just went on to everybody, hey, he didn't get the job due to a technicality of his age. He's too old for it, this, that, and the third. And he just excused himself. Then Floyd like, oh, Lord, let me go see what's wrong with my man. And he goes and tell her. And she, you know, uh, rally up with him and, you know, tell him it ain't no bad thing. We've been here before. Lord knows they've been, been sitting and, and sleeping in depression and uh, disparity for the whole time. I was upset. I like, God, now every time you think they're getting out the project or, get, or having a little lighter uh, spirit on when they wouldn't be so oppressed about things, they still stuck. I'm like, damn, I, I hate these writers. I hate them because they never still got out the get go. You know, and then they killed James off and stuff. And then that's when I really started looking at it because it kind of got bored. But James was like the uh, father figure, the strong man the uh, powerful man of the Evans family and, you know, just a stand-up guy. He, you know, was about family, good friends, and just, you know, living a good life and stuff. And then, you know, the writers just kept going south with his role. You know, when I always had him going up, but then he gets let down. Same thing with JJ. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is just too much. And they should have got it right. Instead of getting rid of him, they should have got the part right. But, you know, sometimes, you know, all the time, even in today's time, they don't want to treat black people right, minorities right anyway. So we just stuck with what we got. But at least they can't say. They can't take nothing from us. We're a bad ass, uh, what do you call it, race, you know. We come in many different colors. We have so much diversity to, to us or with us or within us, I should say. We're smart. We're intelligent. Well, same thing. We're intelligent. We dress nice. Uh, we're a diverse group of people, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we get along with just about every race. So, okay, I guess we would be fear. But anyway, it just is what it is. That was my uh, review and retake of um, the Evans Family Good Times. Yeah. Hope y'all loved it, liked it, whatever. Share it, definitely, and subscribe to my channel. But that was season one, episode one. Two old blues. All right, guys. See y'all next time for something of a video. Okay. Bye.